Welcome to the Introduction to Geographic Information Systems and Science Lecture Series developed by the Quinney College of Natural Resources at Utah State University. Discussion topics for this lecture will include topology and attribute types. Topology has several meanings. Within mathematics, topology is the branch of geometry that deals with properties of a figure that may remain unchanged even when the figure is bent, stretched, or distorted. With respect to GIS, Topology defines the spatial relationships between connecting or adjacent features in a geographic data layer. With respect to this course, topology simply stated rules that describe how geographic elements interact with one another. Elements may interact through a series of different actions including adjacency, intersection, proximity, containment, overlap, and coincidence Topology can be used to identify spatial associations between or among geographic features. Some of these spatial associations include containment, proximity or adjacency, enclosure, or connectivity. So as an example of some spatial relationships, let's consider containment. The relationship between the Utah state boundary and the counties of Utah identify that each one of those counties are contained within the greater boundary of the state of Utah. Another example can be trees contained within a stand. Considering proximity, how do the spatial patterns and distributions of volcanoes relate to the location of tectonic boundaries? As you can see in the figure to your right, we understand that there is a direct relationship between tectonic activity and volcanoes that we see on the surface of the earth. Possibly one of the most important and useful tools when considering topology within the GIS is the identification of intersections and overlap. Now if you look at the figure on the right, it's a standard intersection, could be considered a four-way stop. We know that two lines intersect at that point, creating a vertice, and that those lines have some sort of interaction with one another. However, consider an interstate system where a number of roads tend to overlap or intersect one another. Indeed, these roads may intersect at some point, However, most of these roads do not actually intersect as they are built over one another. Topology allows us to define the spatial relationship between those lines so that we can then take that geographic data and conduct different types of analyses. Rather than showing many different types of intersections, here we can see and define that roads actually are on top of one another but never intersecting with one another. Consider this exercise. I want you to answer the following. Take just a minute, pause the video, and identify how many polygons or areas you can see in the figure. How many intersections or points, meaning how many different places do lines cross one another, or how many lines or arcs do you see within the diagram. And as a bonus, how many centroids or centers of polygons can you find in the diagram. So considering what you've seen here, there's nine polygons identified. We have eight intersections, 16 lines or arcs, and also nine centroids. Now to summarize our very brief discussion of topology, which we have not done justice in just a few slides, we need to realize within a GIS context that understanding topology allows us to identify and manipulate geospatial data to answer complex spatial questions that depend on feature interaction. Yeah. Now it's important as you learn GIS and you move into more advanced GIS analyses that you take the time to really become familiar with topology. There's a great deal of information within the ESRI help or other online help sources where you can find additional information about topology, using topology, and developing what we call topology layers within the GIS. Moving on to discuss attribute types, we've had a good discussion about what different types of data models or GIS data are available, including points, lines, and polygons within our vector data models, and also our continuous and discrete raster data sets. When we're speaking of GIS data, attribute data really is the power behind the GIS. The spatial data, the geometry that we've discussed previously, is very important. However, the describing variables or the attributes are the information behind those spatial elements that really give it context. Attribute data can take many forms. We can organize all of these attribute types into five different categories. Nominal, ordinal, interval, ratio, and cyclic. 
Nominal attributes are variables that provide descriptive information or categories about an object. For example, a vegetation type. The example on the slide so shows a sagebrush. This is a specific type of sagebrush. You could also assign a color nominal attribute. So there's no implied order, size, or other quantitative information associated with a nominal attribute. So as we can see on our left, we have our fire hydrant, and the color is red. So the nominal attribute, the fire hydrant, is red. Ordinal attributes apply some ranking or order by attribute values. An example, we could say low, medium, or high income. Also, first, second, third implies some ordinal ranking. Remember that ordinal attributes imply rank only, but no scale. Interval attributes are numeric data without some absolute zero value. When we speak of absolute zero, we're speaking of a value at which we can no longer go any lower. Interval attributes have no absolute zero value, and data are often recorded as real numbers, and the intervals between the values are generally known. As an example, the Fahrenheit temperature scale is an interval attribute. Ratio attributes are numeric values that do have an absolute zero value. As an example, the Kelvin temperature measurement scale has an absolute zero. Zero degrees Kelvin is as cold as we can measure. Another example is an actual annual income. It is possible for an income to be zero if you have no yearly income. Lastly, and not discussed as often but just as important, are cyclic attributes. So data that consists of some continuous type of data that, that begins to repeat at some point is considered cyclic. Generally, these have to be mathematically adjusted prior to any type of analysis, but you've all seen this when you've considered something like a compass bearing, where 0 and 360 degrees mean the same thing north. Also, another example of a cyclic attribute that we see often in GIS is aspect.